Hi, here I am again with East Forest. And what do you mean again? Sorry, sorry on that. Well, you know, we did this once before. A yeah, but a long time ago. God, so much has happened. Well, actually, and not to interrupt you, Raghu, but no, go ahead. <laughs> that's that's interesting because that podcast is is actually sort of what led to all of this. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because if, right. Let, let's give context, and then we'll go right to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have this wonderful collaboration that East Forest has done with Ramdas. Uh, and he did it, and he's going to explain how it all happened, how he managed to do it. But I will say one, two things. I got to sure. say two things, okay? One is I get a ton of people saying, hey, we want to use Ramdas's uh, words in songs or this, that, and the other. And unfortunately, it's never very good. And uh, maybe I'm a little too judgmental. I don't know. But uh, it... it uh, it was worth waiting for East Forest to get in touch uh, after we had met to say, hey, I want to do this thing. And he showed me what he was doing. And I went yeah, right on. And that all came true in flying colors. We have this absolutely wonderful collaboration using Ram Dass's words with East Forest music. And we're going to this show is designed to let you in on the wonders uh, you many of you may have already uh, heard tracks because we've been releasing it he's been releasing it every quarter a few tracks but now the whole thing is going to be with us on august 9th right that's right yeah yeah that's really you're right it's been released in chapters but it really kind of begins on august 9th because it was always intended to be a listening experience something that you could really get inside Ram da these new new recordings from Ram Das and the music brings them to life. But I just want to say that's important though. I'm gonna interrupt you. Okay. New <laughs> recording. Because this Ram Das was just uh having a chat. And you know, yeah. East Force will tell us all about it. But yeah. the point is these because many of much of what we do, like the movie Becoming Nobody, although there is a brand new uh Ram Dass interview, similar to what you did, actually, in this case with the director, we're using archival stuff. And, it, and it, well, we'll talk about that later. Sure. Let's get to the genesis. Okay, we did this podcast, then what happened? Well, I think that's, I, I want to just say that, you know, I was thinking back, a lot of people ask me two things when they ask about this record. They would ask me, what was it like being with Ram Dass? And they asked me, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. And to answer that second question, how did this happen? Uh, we did the mind rolling podcast, it was probably now at least a year and a half ago. It had to have been because I was in Maui with Ram Dass recording him in June. It was June last year. So just about a year ago, a little over a year ago. And you and I just got to know each other on the podcast. And through that, I think it allowed me to have the courage really to, to I had this idea and you went to India and I was like, I, I was talking to Tim, uh, my manager and I said, you know, I, I really want to present this idea to Raghu and I think I'm going to wait till he gets back. And I, I just feel really strongly that this could work. This could really work as a way of bringing Ram Dass's uh, voice to life. And to your credit, thank God. I think it was also good timing. I mean, I, I did believe that I was the guy for the job, but I also thought it seemed like it was the right time, right place kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. And, um, also, uh, we had done this thing with Justin Beretta of Glitch Mob, where he took yeah. a Ram Dass meditation from actually from just, it was a long time back, this particular meditation that Ram Dass did in 1973, uh, just uh, after he had, uh, after Neem Karoli Baba had left. So um, we had a precedent that I thought was worthy of uh, and being more open to because Justin did a, a fabulous job. But that's when I said to you, yeah, we'll give you a bunch of material and you can go <laughs> through it. And, and, this, and what did you say? I, I sort of uh, graciously was, uh, tried to convince you that going to Ram Dass and recording more recordings, which sounds absurd, because how many, how many hours of Ram Dass speaking is recorded that you guys have in the archive? 
it's so many gigabytes that we couldn't count them. It's I, so I heard it was like 50,000 hours from Rita or something like that. I mean, yeah. some insane number. That might be a little high, but you know, it's an <laughs> insane number. Yeah, because they recorded everything over, you know, these 40 odd years. Yeah. And so I know I knew it was a crazy ask in a way. And but I also here's why I asked it, because one all the field recordings, and I think of like recording people talking as a field recording. It's like a, you know, I, all the ones I've used in my music have been ones that I've recorded. And what's special about this, it feels like these are the colors I'm given to paint with. This is like what the universe is giving me to work with. And then I can just, that's it. And so I thought it'd be beautiful if not only could we have Ramda sort of choose what he wants to talk about that's relevant to today and now and capture him from this place of, of cumulative wisdom. But also, uh, it just felt right. You know, it, it felt like giving it over to Maharaji too. It just, at the time, I don't even think I was fully aware of, but kind of saying, I need to let this flow kind of through me where I'm just sort of an orchestrator mm. as opposed to me going through an archive and choosing all the things, all the little sound bites. That's, that's too much of my own decision in a sense. I wanted to hand it over to something larger than myself. And in turn, what was cool about it, I think the story of this record now very much is that it's Ram Dass uh, today. And it's you when I when people hear the songs, when I hear the songs, especially people who've never heard of Ram Dass, they hear a voice of wisdom and the wisdom is just seeping through mm -hmm. uh, the character of his voice. And obviously the, the words so masterful. I mean, I mean, look, one thing that was really interesting, Raghu, is that using the music to work with Ram Dass recordings now suddenly the pauses and the spaces in his speech become an asset. Mm. And, and all this, and because of that, you know, now his, his little phrases, you fit them in rhythmically to the music. You're not rearranging them. You're just putting them in the rhythm. He comes to life. He comes to life. And it's like, what, it's such a great use of technology. This one being music uh, to transmit this, this guy's work because, you know, we'd sit there as you know, and he would say, I would ask a question and he'd go for like half an hour mm. and my brain's trying to just stay on the ground and follow and think, and I'm thinking about other things and I'll come back and yada, yada. And then I'd put it all together. And it was like one minute with this perfect arc, a mm. beautiful opener, a tagline, a little bit of humor, poetry all over the place. And I was like, this guy is, a, is beyond a master and he's fully awake going on. <laughs> you know, he fully, present and, and what he wants to say here but once we put it inside the music it's you it, he's just there he's mm. just there yeah it, it's pretty amazing but you know what we're talking about stuff that we can we need to hear a little bit of this okay? <laughs> yeah why why describe it yeah <laughs> <laughs> no no but uh, what you said is so is profound and true um okay so like I used to have a radio show way back when. It's how I met Ramdas. People who listen to Mind Rolling, if they listen to the first couple of episodes, uh, they will hear that story. Uh, but um, it was a freeform radio station, which meant it's kind of like what KCRW Morning Becomes Eclectic is to some yeah. degree, although nowhere near. I mean, we were Hendrix to Coltrane to, you know, you know uh, instrumental um jazz I, I mean we really ran the game whatever you were feeling so this is what i'm feeling okay uh and so the first song on our playlist DJ Marcus, is, here we go. <laughs> yeah, is called mind karma so uh let let's listen to mind karma and then uh, you'll uh, fill us in and and what that meant to you and how it's coming, how it did come. Featuring in. Trevor Hall on this guy's the one singing in the background. Oh, yes. Yeah. And he's our, our brother, Trevor. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so here you go. Mind Karma. <laughs> our mind.
hands in the way of a clear view of God. So, uh, I, as I said, I picked that track as, uh, as the first track to play here. And I can't tell, you know, that, that track just stands out. Uh, and there's a few tracks that I really love because most people, you get a record, there's a few tracks that are like really stand out and speak to you. And this one does. So tell me about Mind Farm. Well, Sheila Bringy, by the way, is playing the Bansuri flute there, which is oh. amazing. And, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you said that this sort of phrase, this idea of mind karma was not something that you had heard Ram Dass talk about before. Never. Never heard him talk about mind karma. I'm still trying to get, wrap my head around it. Well, that's, yeah. that's the beauty of that phrase because it's talking about your mind and, we're talk, and I, I'm exactly the same way. 
I can just chew on that in my brain. But then it's like, wait a minute, is that the representation of what he's saying? <laughs> like, yeah, right. It's a deep one, just in two words. Uh, and I, what I love about that musically, as the way it sort of personifies what he's saying, is the flute feels like the mind. It's like this fast phrases whipping around. And uh, mm. Trevor is singing uh, this mantra. And that's kind of like the antidote or the, the counterpart to that. It's more of like the heart. Or the soul. Well, and certainly cuts through the mind karma. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. That one's, it's really interesting, that one. Um, and it's kind of unique. It sits in its own place musically on the record. And the record intentionally across the 14 songs travels to a few different places. Like it doesn't stay in just ambient or, or just electronic sure. or just contemporary classical or just, it moves through these things. And I think I wanted to do that so there's a journey in the listening, but it also allows different doorways for different types of people to enter into the space. Like you might, for you, it might be mind karma. For someone else, it might be uh, I'm loving awareness. Or yeah, something. yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, to me, that's the. I like them all. The <laughs> yeah, you do, do you? I'm, I'm biased. Yeah. Uh, well, tell us what happened. Okay, so you had the idea. We said go ahead. We arranged it all. You went over, describe your, you know, as you drove up there, you must have been going through a few things. Well, I think we go back a little bit because we set the date of June 16th and I knew full well I could go all the way over there and it just wouldn't happen. And so this whole thing has been an exercise in giving it over and just saying, look, I don't, I don't control this. So it's going to be what it's going to be. And I'm not going to get upset about, and it's been, a, that's been a beautiful lesson in the entire thing sort of this vision that i've seen maharaji uh guiding it and the more i gave myself over to that the actually the easier it became because i didn't have to make so many decisions i just tried to be intuitive about well what do i need to do or what direction what what work do i need to do here so we went over there uh or i went over there and i rented a an airbnb on the island of maui anywhere i didn't know where to go on the i didn't know where he lived <laughs> <laughs> so I just picked a spot. It turns out it was across the street, across the street. No, I kid you not. Literally across the street. That's great. Um, and so I, I came over and uh, we set this stuff up. And I was, I was, I was obviously nervous. And I'm, I'm setting up the microphones. And Ramdas kind of says, I think it's the first thing he said to me. Have you done this before? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Look, I know I look young. I'm 40 years old. Uh, yes, I've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, blah, blah. I just stammered through like various conditions and appropriations. And we still hadn't really looked at each other much. And we finally got everything set up. And uh, Dossima and everyone leaves the room. The door shuts. And he just does that thing where he just turns to me and it's boom, we locked eyes. Mm -hmm. And I completely melted. Mm. And over his shoulder was a picture of Maharaji on his bookshelf laughing. And I looked at the picture and I felt like Maharaji was laughing, you know, in that moment with me and at this, all the feelings and all the control and all these things that I'd had. And it's sort of this joyful laugh. Mm. And it really broke me open. It really did. And we just gazed for a while while it was recording. And then I realized, I thought it would be sort of <laughs> just, oh, we're going to shoot the shit and I'll pick out some phrases here and there. And I realized now he's sort of like, what do, you, what do you want? You know, where's your, ask me something. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, I need to ask some questions. And I really was trying to tune into what wanted to be asked as opposed to me having this list of questions. And I believe the first question was about nature, which resulted in the song Nature, the first song on the album. And, you know, I asked him something like, young people, me, a lot of us, we feel so disconnected, especially with technology and nature feels like an antidote, but what do we do? How do we connect with that? What do you have to say about that? You know, something broad of that nature. And I swear to God, what you hear in that song is exactly what he said in the order he said it. No, and, I didn't know that. Yeah. And when he said that, you know, trees, oh. water, he starts going through his list. I was just, I completely relaxed. It's like, oh my, I was just like, oh my God, this guy's he's nailing it. He's <laughs> nailing it. Like, it's yeah. perfect. It's so beautiful and perfect. He, it's almost like he, it's like, this guy's a pro. He knows exactly what we're doing exactly what we need we need like a, about a minute of perfect poetry that has a teaching and it's uh so yeah and that's it and then we we're just off to the races and we met for a couple of days all right wait we got to stop 
yeah. The way you've just described this song, which I love as well. Yeah. We have to play it. Sorry. I know we just played no, one. No, it's, it's, this is a music show, okay? I mean, we're talking about music. I got to hear it. We got to hear it. Okay, yeah. so here is Nature, East Forest, and Rondas. <laughs> Trees Grasses Water Sun Stars Moon Clouds Rain, all are our friends, are us. Nature embraces us, and we embrace nature. We are nature, we are the trees, and the clouds, and the waters. When you hug a tree, you're hugging yourself. So, you know, it really speaks to me this that he did this, that Ram Dass did this, and that the way that you put it together, I mean, it's, it's just wonderful. But it speaks to me in a way that uh, you and I maybe have talked about this in the past. Maybe we talked about it on the, on the podcast, the last, the, the podcast that we did do. But um, the idea of what's, some of what's really needed today for everybody and most especially next generation coming up is a return. It's a return to wisdom. It's a, it's a return to primordial relationship with the wild. It's, there's a return that needs to happen. Uh, and mm -hmm. certainly nature is the first place one would, to me, one would go uh, to reestablish something that we're so missing because of the way we've been living uh, in in, uh, in the West, most particularly uh, the the way in which technology is just pretty much overwhelming us and creating in us this need to constantly be uh, entertained, massaged ill-informed i could go on and on and on sure so 
I really love that this track is on the record because the way that he, as you said, you know, he, it's very poetic and just the, the depth from which he's saying these things. He's doing it on a day-to-day basis. He is sitting yeah outside or did you sit outside with him we were in the study so he was facing the ocean looking at the ocean the trees when he was saying i mean he's just describing what was in front of him right exactly yeah Yeah. so that so we're not talking about somebody going on an expedition for Mm -hmm. 48 days without any provisions and see how you're going to make it we're talking about someone who's sitting and just being and wherever you sit and be nature is there and, and there's a line in the song that he says, like when you see the lake or the ocean, the clouds and so forth, you're seeing yourself. And I think that's an important thing to remember is that like, we're not separate from nature. I don't mean that in a hippie way. I mean, like literally we're made of the same stuff. We're just nature walking and talking with eyes and we can, we can do things. I mean, and I think just being around nature and that's why I love like field recordings of nature or hiking or like, or just, just taking a moment to soak it in. It it, it decreases that sense of separation and reminds you of what you already are. So it's more like peeling away an onion instead of like, Oh, I'm going to go in my spacesuit and go experience this to charge up. It's like more like, no, I mean, you're already it. It's sort of sloughing off what's in the way. Yeah. And the return. I like that word. It's a return to more of uh, the connecting, as you say, uh, where there's less of that polarization at the very least that we feel with those around us, the world around us, nature, the environment. Interconnectedness, yeah. Interconnectedness, yeah. All right, so next thing was, this went on for a couple of days? Well, so we met over two days, but uh, I think the amount of actual time where it was on tape, so to speak, was about three hours. And that condensed down to 14 micro subjects or teachings, which of course is exactly enough for a full length record. It was like perfect like that. And, uh, you know, but we were there for a week. So we got time to do kirtan and swimming and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Mm. But three hours went down to about 15 minutes. Mm. (laughs) Well, that's how it is, right? (laughs) It was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. And, and how did you talk about a couple of the other songs and how you approach them? Um, because I mean, dark thoughts talk about oh, dark. God, thoughts. That's my favorite. Uh, yeah. So I put, I wrote the music or I put the music together after we had met and it was sort of like scoring films. Like each one obviously has its own subject matter and feeling. It was just sort of thinking like, what's the music that wants to go with this to support it? So, for instance, the song Home, which is about his first experience with psilocybin, you know, there's a sense of playfulness and levity and carnivalesque almost for anyone who's had any experience with psilocybin. Psilocybin is my friend. Greatest opening line of all time. Yeah, right. <laughs> when he said that, I was just like, I remember like high-fiving him in the air. I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's so mm. funny. And Dark Thoughts, um, on the other side, I think I asked a question about suicide. And this this is how everything's increasing with depression and and my own battles with that too. What do we do? And I really loved his idea of loving your dark thoughts as opposed to pushing them away or mangling them into something new. This idea of sort of bringing them in with love. And what I love about that song, um, I'm kind of partial to some of these contemporary classical type instrumentations where it's it's layered pianos. So you're getting like all these pianos making these ostinatos in the background this machine type sound with the wood shuffling and then viola and there's a i brought in this that was kylie king on the viola and violin but i brought in someone named owen hoffman smith to play cello on nature and we were in the studio and uh he he had a double bass asked that that he brought for like the bass on home and stuff and i said do you bow on the bass because that's kind of a rare thing he says i do i do and i said well you know, not many people are very good at that, but I'd love to give it a shot. You know, so he pulled it out for that track, mm. and he was the first one to lay down that sort of it's almost like a wail, or it's like this deep, low bowing. It sounds like a deep cello because that's kind of what it is, and it's so moody, and it just felt like the dark thought itself. 
And when he put that down, it completely transformed the song. And Kylene came in later that day and I said, hey, we got to like scrap what we were going to do. I need you to play on this thing that Owen came in earlier today. And I love, love, love the combination of the strings and the piano on that one. It's got like glockenspiel in the background and Fender Rhodes. And, and it, it's just this wonderful acoustic um, menagerie of sound. And it's one of my favorites. Hey, who's that guy? You you sent me uh, some links because um, uh, some somebody's interested in in the record and maybe doing a remix. And the first was a contemporary classical guy. What's his name? Well, he's not a hundred percent on board, so I don't know if we should mention his name. But uh, well, it doesn't matter if he does it. He does it. If he doesn't, I I up to Maharaji. All right. Well. Yeah. Um, I, well, I'm, that's the disclaimer. And Nils Fromm, which is one Nils of my uh, idols. Um, uh-huh. Because yeah. you, the, I'd never even heard of him. So God, it's so beautiful. Oh. Yeah. He, but you know what? What's really interesting is that uh, I was watching Rick Rubin's show on Showtime. On Showtime? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shangri-La. And the last one has Krishna Das on. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Did you see it? No, but I heard about it two days ago, and I'm dying. Oh, I saw the trailer. It looks really so good. Cool. It looks so good. I mean, he ends uh, he ends the whole thing with Krishnadas doing Pancho and Lefty. Amazing. Okay, not a kirtan, although he did a kirtan in the show. Anyhow, in that same show, uh, I think it's that show. So this guy was Mills is in it. Yeah, yeah. He, so Rick. Rick obviously likes this guy too. He put oh, him in the show, and uh, nobody has you know taste and chops like Rick Rubin. Um, so I thought, wow, okay, that's a great, great, great thing. Yeah, uh, and there's other remixes um, that are coming out, and it's just a wonderful way to extend the conversation yeah. and yeah. literally remix Ram Dass and this music into some some more uh, chapters and just well, it'll be singles, but it's just really cool. Mm, yeah, no, really. And some of the other, uh, what were some of the other titles, topics that uh, that really touched you? Because it seems to me what happened here is that you, when Ramdas started moving into these different areas, which, like I say, I, I had, you know, some of this stuff like Mind Karma, mm-hmm. you know, I have known him an awful long time and work with him really closely and. So this was a new thing. So it was really wow. Oh, that's cool. So what are the, what are a couple of the other ones that really tickled you? Oh God, um, tickled your fancy. There's a lot. I mean, I mean more subject than than musical. Yeah, the Soul Land one I thought was really touching. I, I was always touched by a book called Journey of Souls, and he was sort of almost riffing. Actually, I think I saw it on his bookshelf when I was in there. But it was just this whole idea of a soul pod and sort of a group of souls that you work with over almost infinity again and again in different roles. And it was a beautiful, joyful idea, beautiful, you know, comforting thought. Mm. And that particular riff of his, I, personally, it has meant a lot to me. Um, there are many others, like the, the You're a Guru one was touching because he says you're a guru but then he talks about maharaji yeah well i didn't get that one actually what is he saying you're a guru who's you're a guru and that's playing in the background of the whole song like a mantra yeah yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's sort of this uh double meaning type thing going on because then while that's happening he's talking about maharaji and that's one where the music and the editing itself kind of changed around what he said not the order of it but it put a it put another layer so of two ramdasas at once yeah. um, and that one's really interesting musically because and it's kind of a music nerd thing but the, it's it's an open d so it's not major it's not minor mm. it's just kind of in this space of like well it's it's undefined mm. uh, the feeling of it and i met a guy in canada when i was touring lucas tennyson who builds instruments and he made a cello out of a gourd it's called the gordello and i just it was following the signs as i was trying to say and i said hey you want to try if i send you a track you want to try laying some of that gordello down and he did on that song and it's so it almost has a middle eastern sound it's it's otherworldly and man i i can't speak highly enough of the people who who played on this record and how it added depth and character and there's cora 
there's strings, you know, whether it's bass guitar, there's singers. I mean, it really opened it up. Yeah. Uh, just to go back to uh, the uh, You Are the Guru, that uh, Ramdas does talk a lot about Ram Ramana Maharshi, who is a great, great saint that lived in India. Uh, he left in the 50s, I believe. Mm. And his whole teaching was around self-inquiry. Who am I? He, in yeah. fact, became realized because he couldn't, he was like, 16 or 17 years old and he thought to himself what is this all about mm -hmm. I, I i gotta know with what why are we here what is who am i you know and mm -hmm. so he laid down on a uh you know on a bench on his bed whatever tuck it and he said i'm not moving till i know who i am and he was there many many hours through the night and he had uh, he got awakened, right in that moment. Now, just to get, just to juxtapose, juxtapose from there to me, I was doing the same thing. Who the fuck am I when I was sixteen? And why is this happening? And what's going on? But I don't know. I never thought of. I'm not going to move until I know that. I waited until I could hear a a, a song from John Coltrane. To realize what song i like love supreme or something or? no my favorite things live oh in a God. club at 16 years old in Montreal. shut up you heard john coltrane live play my favorite things shut up is right i did oh, God. i talked about this on the car? podcast you get to sit with maharaji <laughs> you got to see john coltrane play live play my i mean no but i i it, uh, it was transformational i really I, went yeah. out on it i mean you know what what happened so i tell this story all the time right about this is one of a transformational moment for me but uh you kind of just keep telling it and it gets in your mind the story. And you don't even, you, yeah the story and you yeah. you maybe are not experiencing the reality of the moment right mm. then suddenly just the other day i swear i'll send this to you or we got to put it up on uh, on the in the show notes Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Quintet in 1960 in Paris at the Olympia Theater. Okay. So Miles does an opening solo, et cetera, as usual. And then he gives it over to Coltrane. You listen to that. And, and I listened to it and I went, oh my God, I wasn't kidding. It immediately transforms you out. If you just, if you allow yourself to get lost in the moment. Hell yeah. The sound. My guys are Bill Evans and Keith Jarrett. I mean, I'm a piano guy. Yeah, right. I have all uh, these guys, yeah. but like. Whoa. Speaking of. <laughs> speaking of the chimes. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. That's them again. Yeah. No, Bill Evans for sure. Keith Jarrett, I just found. So I'm going to send you some stuff. Hey, we're going to have a little jazz exchange here. Uh, yeah, but what I was trying to yeah. say about R Ramana Maharshi was yeah. that what we picked up from him and what Ramdas has repeated over and over many, many times in his lectures and talks over the years is God, this is what Ramana would say, God, Guru, and self are one. This is not outside anything. God is not outside. Guru is not outside. And so that the the way that you put that together with the chorus, you are guru, and and Maharaji is reflecting the uh, the many levels of what that really is. That's that's really important. I'm glad yeah. you said that because yeah. when I play that one live, um, I think th that song of all the songs is maybe the one that kind of can key some people off because of the word guru, as it does. Awful word. It's scary. <laughs> And just you don't know what to do. Oh my God, Guru! You mean you're actually going to go and and you're gonna you're gonna give up? What do you you're gonna give up all your money to the Guru? Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna, gonna, gonna become a you. slave yeah. and he's gonna yeah. sleep with you. Whatever, yeah. it's terrible. Guru, yeah, yeah. awful. <laughs> so that song's a bit of reeducation, and, and it's not usually yeah. give a little preamble to describe it a bit. But yeah. uh, for the faithful, they they love they love it. I love it. It's wonderful. Yeah. That one. So that one was sort of intentional too. 
Mm. I mean, look, that's what Ram Dass talked about. So I was like, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll put that. He talks about it all the time. And he does, uh, he even says things. If you want a guru and you can't find one, you, I'll lend you mine. It's okay. <laughs> that's in there, yeah. I love that line. Like anything can happen. By the way, everybody, you have no choice. I had no choice. I was plucked. All right. Uh, East Forest was plucked. We we're all plucked by the guru at one point or another. And it doesn't have to be in the physical, but there is, and you can call it simply my true intuitive heart, okay, is the guru. Uh, because once you become, you shed all this story that we've been talking about, our stories that we build up in our heads, once you shed that, then that guru, which is Ram Dass talks loving awareness, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, uh, is ever present and uh, it finds you. You don't find it. So yeah. there, that's about the guru. Fruit of the same tree. Yeah. I mean, it's just I, the, the biggest lesson of this whole record, Raghu, is, is me realizing, I think, that none of us are separate from the guru. And I think when you read about Maharazi or read about Ram, listen to the podcasts, there's an inherent, there can be an inherent sense of separation that like, well, I'm the listener and these are the people who have that experience. And then that broke, it broke it all down. I mean, I, I was lucky to be sitting with Ram Dass, but I realized I didn't have to be. Or, you know, Maharaji is like, oh, this is, this is the ever present uh, water that you'd ask a fish what, it, you know, they're in. It's like, it was a real gift to, to feel that and see that. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, it's wonderful for me to see you, you know, take off with Ram Dass, you know, and do this thing and share this. I mean, this is, there's nothing else. I, uh, you know, I'm lucky to have this job. That's all I keep saying to myself. Uh -huh. so. um, okay. When, uh, give us another song that you felt really spoke to you because uh, you have been doing that. Yeah. Well, I'm loving awareness, perhaps, because yeah, that's right. one of everyone's favorites. It's so magical. It's the longest song on the record and the most potent in a sense. And it has circuitous path of becoming. It started out, actually, that that's one where the music existed in advance. It was just an ambient live jam between myself and a violinist named Thatcher Schmidt in Portland. And it's just something we recorded together. He came over just to record. And I liked it. I liked it, but I just had it. I had nothing really to do with it. And that was a couple years before. And then when we were together, Ram Dass uh, got into his I'm Loving Awareness meditation. I was really embodying it, which I was very happy about because I was hoping we'd get that. And so I tried it on the music and it, it was working pretty well. But then, of course, as timing would have it, Krishna Das reached out, I think, through you and was just thinking, you know, saying he'd love to try some stuff on the record and I thought of him on that one immediately because it's basically a drone you know so it's sort of open-ended it's in the key of B and I sent it over to him and I think for him too he tried some new stuff which was just basically improvising in the moment which I thought was awesome which is how which what that's what's going on with the piano and the violin we were doing the same thing and it just worked out so beautifully and I think you had a great comment of, I originally had all of Ram Dass's stuff up front, but you suggested like we kind of get into it and then put his sort of explanation at the end. And it really lets you, what's cool about the song is it's like a tool in the sense that he's describing this thing, like all the songs, but the song itself becomes a doorway to experience what that thing is, loving awareness, and to actually feel it and embody it. And so it's a felt experience, this entire song. And the whole record, in a way, what I've noticed with people, it's sort of putting out a, a field of energy more than just ideas. You know, it really cultivates a feeling in people. And so I'm really interested in what the experience becomes when someone goes through the whole 60 minutes of the record in, in one arc. Mm. And it's a lot of ideas, but it's, it fits together really well. Mm. I don't know if I told you this, but to me, the way in which Krishna Das and Ram Das are weaved together uh, is stupendous and also poignant. And po by poignant, I'll tell you one thing that happened that makes this just incredible. We were doing a retreat in Maui, 
-hmm. And it was me and Krishnadas and Ramdas doing a session. And Ramdas was talking about I am loving awareness, the mantra, what it is, how you get there. And suddenly, Krishnadas pipes up. I mean, I turned to him and say, what do you think? Or whatever. I prompted him. He said, I got to tell you, I don't know anything about I am loving awareness. I know Sitara. I know Ram Ram. I don't know from loving awareness. <laughs> I like say, you've been doing this for years. All of a sudden now you decide to say this. To say this? <laughs> so Ram Das looks at him like, what? <laughs> you know? And then Ram Das picks up the baton and starts doing, I, oh, loving awareness, Ram Ram. Loving awareness, Ram Ram. <laughs> loving awareness, Ram Ram. And we all, you know, collapsed <laughs> into paradigms of, of joy and laughter uh, because it was like a sticky moment or something. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then I hear, you know, you were sharing mixes with me, you know, as we were going along and, and I just loved the fact that, you know, you weave them, but the fact that Ramdas is doing, I am loving awareness and Krishna is coming in, Jay Sita Ram or whatever. I mean, it is so <laughs> exactly uh, the pent pent ultimate moment of them coming together in a way they never have come together before in in this kind of a setting with using and, mantra. And I think Krishna Das told me they had never been on a recorded track together of music besides live stuff. Probably. I'd have to think more about that, but the, uh, uh, and which was even more beautiful because of all of you guys sort of the way you've woven your lives together. I'd like, well this is a a beautiful way to kind of honor this place and time by it sounds like two brothers weaving around each other yeah on the track, yeah, which is, yeah it's really cool yeah and and everybody who's listening you all have heard us talk about ram das's loving awareness of course you've heard it on on the podcast i do with ram das ram das here and now but certainly this has been a core teaching uh, mm. because if people like Okay, how do we get unglued from our thoughts? How do we cut through the story that we're telling ourselves, which uh, Krishnas refers to as the movie of me? What do we do? And this has been the antidote, exact antidote of this. And Ramdas, you know, moves one through it. And, um, and uh, I'm just thinking of this film becoming nobody because we're going to have a sort of starter kit, which will have that meditation in, in, in its entirety of what Ram Dass does and the explanation, which he does a little bit in the song, but basically... The song's in the film, I believe, at the end of the Yeah, film. the song is in the film. At the, it's the ending song in the film. It's yeah. actually what Ram Dass requested. So, but the idea of getting out of uh, ungluing from your thoughts, mm -hmm. from your eye, from your ego eye, and how to do that is breathe into your center of your chest and do this I am loving awareness or do what you know loving awareness Ram Ram it doesn't you know eventually there's no I am there just is the is so but whatever however it, it works for you or me or anybody I am loving awareness and you start to move into a very warm and vibratory feeling in the center of your being, spiritual heart, and repeating this, you will f be fascinated about how quickly you are ejected from your mind and that you are really, uh, your whole perspective changes. There's no more judging. You're not judging either other people or yourself. You've got much more kindness and compassion starting with yourself. I mean, it is an amazing practice, and I am so happy that this uh, track uh, sees the light of day with what, uh, out of all the tracks, to me, this is the most important because it can actually act as a, a, a consciousness transformer. Yeah, well, thanks for those thoughts. I mean, mm. I just wanted the music to amplify what is already there, and so that's what I feel 
at its best it does. It just sort of takes the emotional content and weight of it and just makes it times four or whatever. Uh, And I think, I think for you and I talked before about how we wanted this record and I know I have wanted it to be a a tool and a vehicle for Ram Dass's work for generations. And I wanted to make something timeless and that song feels timeless for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we got to hear that song and just everybody, I bugged East Forest earlier today and said, well, since it's a radio show, (laughs) 10 minute tracks, although does it really matter? (laughs) <laughs> in terms of what we're doing as a podcast but you know what i like this version of it anyhow so we're playing a uh, east forest did a shortened version of it that we needed for uh, other um purposes so here it is i am loving awareness featuring krishna das have to get out of our minds. Our thinking minds. I'll tell you how I do it. using a mantra or phrase I am loving awareness I am loving awareness I am loving awareness Thank you. 
So I don't think we need to say much more. Uh, I don't think we can talk about this in any way other than the power precedes, if you've just listened to this song. Uh, and uh, by the way, a link will be available so that you can find a way to listen to everything, to download it. Is there a CD that yes. you can even buy even though? Yep. So it's available everywhere you listen to music for streaming. And it's, there's a double vinyl limited edition with all the lyrics available that you can pre-order and it'll be actually, of, well, you can order it. And there's a CD as well. Uh, those are both available definitely at eastforest.org. And now we'll get a few copies over to Love Server member too, if you guys want to. Yeah, no, it'll be in Ramdas shop for sure. We're going to carry if you want them. Cause it's nice to have as a, a physical it's, representation. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, the vinyl is stunning. It's like two records with a splatter multicolor and the painting of Ram Dass on one side by Liz Hilton, the yeah. painting of Maharaji on the back, all the lyrics on the inside of yeah. From Ram Dass. Yeah, and, it, and of course, uh, everything you do through us helps the foundation to continue to do the work it does and also helps support east forest to continue to do the work he does which is fabulous work and everything you've done here i i can't thank you enough and I'm so happy to have had this uh, 
collaboration with you, and I mean that, as you know. Uh, thank you, and uh, the feeling is mutual. I mean, thank you for your vision on this and for your willingness and just for saying yes and the support. It's been a long journey, and I just can't be more excited that now it's becoming something we can actually share. Yeah, and please, everybody out there, share this with your friends and neighbors and social media, etc. cetera. And uh, as I said, everything will be available on in the show notes uh, which you will go to be here now network.com slash mind rolling. And uh, uh, the video will be at the bottom, by the way, if you want to watch this instead of just listen to the podcast, we put everything up on YouTube. So uh, thank you again. Thanks. 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 He's for us. Yeah, man. We've got to continue um, on this uh Attack, which was just uh, we're just getting started uh, yeah, yeah yeah all right everybody this is mind rolling i'm ragu we'll see you next week on the be here now network mm-hmm.